Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nick, or The Notorious Fantasy, and in today's video, we're going to be going in-depth into my week number 11 quarterback start or sit decisions for the 2022 fantasy football season. But before we could get on into things, I would like to ask that if you guys are new to the channel and you do end up enjoying today's video, that you please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. And while you're down there, whether you are new to the channel or not, please make sure that you do leave a like on today's video. It would help me out a ton. If you want to follow me on Twitter, please do so at NotoriousFN. TSY. Also, if you guys have any questions about week number 11, doesn't even have to necessarily correlate to the quarterback position. Please ask down below in the comment section or in the discord linked in the pinned comment or in the video description. This video is brought to you guys by DraftKings. We're going to be talking about a little bit later. And of note, there are four teams on by this week, all of Florida with the Jaguars, Dolphins and Buccaneers, as well as the Seattle Seahawks. So without further ado, let's get into my week number 11 quarterback start or sit decisions. We begin with Thursday Night Football. The Atlanta Titans, the Tennessee Titans at the Green Bay Packers. For the Tennessee Titans, Ryan Tannehill is going to be a sit for me. Ultimately, I do believe that the Tennessee Titans will be very competitive in this game, but I think that will be because Derrick Henry runs a train in this game. The Green Bay Packers defense is susceptible to the run. We just saw Tony Pollard have a great game up against them last week, and Derrick Henry is normally very good in the cold. So I think the Titans will keep this game close, but not because of Ryan Tannehill. Aaron Rodgers is going to be a start for me up against the Tennessee Titans. The Titans defense is pretty meh. I wouldn't say they're awful. I wouldn't say they are amazing either. Aaron Rodgers has had some really bad games this season, but ultimately he's been just about as average as it gets. He is not the MVP quarterback that we've seen from the last two seasons, but still up against the Titans. I do think he is a start worthy quarterback, not a guy that I'm going to be banging the drums aggressively for, but a guy that I will put in my lineup. Next up, we move to the beginning of the Sunday slate with the Chicago Bears at the Atlanta Falcons. Justin Fields has been unstoppable over the last four weeks, and over the last six weeks, he has been a great start. Getting the Falcons defense this week is an incredibly easy matchup. And again, we've seen Fields put up great numbers, even up against tougher defenses like the Miami Dolphins. So imagine what he is going to do up against a putrid, a garbage Atlanta Falcons defense. Right now, as I'm recording this video, I have Justin Fields ranked as my number one quarterback on the week. Yes, ahead of guys like Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen. I really do think Justin Fields is going to take a shit directly on the chest of the Atlanta Falcons defense. I love this spot for him. The rushing upside means so much in fantasy football. Marcus Mariota is a start-worthy quarterback as well. I do like this matchup up against the Chicago Bears defense. Early on in the season, the Bears defense was pretty solid, but after they traded away the pieces, now their defense is down astronomical. Marcus Mariota is far from the ideal quarterback in terms of an NFL starter, but for fantasy football with some rushing upside and with him starting to throw the ball a little bit more as of recently, he's definitely a start-worthy guy, but he's around the range of Rodgers where I'm not really banging the drum for him. If you got to play him, you can play him. He's nowhere near the range of a guy like Justin Fields. We got the Carolina Panthers at the Baltimore Ravens. In this spot, you guessed it, you're going to be starting Lamar Jackson. Now, Lamar Jackson started off this season on fucking fire NBA jam style. This guy was absolutely skull fucking defenses. As of recently, he's kind of simmered down. I'm not saying that he's now just a bad quarterback or something. He's simmered down a little bit. But this week, he gets the Panthers defense, who I think Lamar Jackson could blow the back out of. So I fully expect a big matchup out of Lamar Jackson. The reports right now are that P.J. Walker will not be starting in this game, and it will be Baker Mayfield, not Mono Man Sam either. I think Baker Mayfield is the better quarterback for the team compared to P.J. Walker, but Baker Mayfield is worse for D.J. Moore. Not a guy I want to start in fantasy football, but it is interesting because at least Baker Mayfield is an interesting quarterback. Like there's like some type of a storyline with Baker Mayfield up against the Ravens. Next up, we got the Cleveland Browns, Baker's old team at the Buffalo Bills. Now, Josh Allen is currently listed as a start, but there are reports going around from the weathermen, the weather woman or women that are saying that this game might have two feet of snow. Two feet of snow. Now, obviously, there's not going to be two feet of snow on the field because they shovel. They plow it away. 
But if it's gonna be snowing all game long, if it's gonna be a fucking blizzard, then Josh Allen is not start worthy. So we're gonna have to wait until Sunday to on the morning live stream, Sunday morning, 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure you check that out every Sunday. We'll be talking about it. I'll be looking at the weather. There's going to be videos on Twitter that I will also tweet out. Follow me on Twitter at NotoriousFNTSY. Probably of crazy wind and crazy snow. But if, you know, since it's only Wednesday, things could change. Maybe it won't snow at all. We will have to see. But right now, based upon the projections, I would be incredibly nervous to start Josh Allen with some top three potential. He really slayed what I thought he was going to do last week. I thought he was going to come in there and play like shit. Now, this wasn't the premier Josh Allen game, but he did look better than I thought he would look because, honestly, I thought the injury would impact him a little bit more. Jacoby Brissett did not play the best up against the Miami Dolphins. I'm just excited to see Deshaun Watson under center, honestly, having a competent, really good quarterback that has top five fantasy upside. It's not like Jacoby Brissett isn't a competent quarterback, so I guess I will retract that statement, but I do think Jacoby Brissett is a sit up against the Bills' defense, rain, snow, or shine. Next up, we got the Washington Commanders at the Houston Texans. Taylor Heineke wins against the Philadelphia Eagles, and really, it's not that Taylor Heineke won, the Commanders won. After the game, Taylor Heineke did his best Kirk Cousins impression, and this man had all the chains on him. He was drinking bush lights. There was like a garbage bag of like 12 bush lights next to him. And the funniest part of this all is not that he's dressed like Kirk Cousins with all the chains or that he's drinking all these bush lights. It's that this guy is literally sitting in a seat that looks like he's flying fucking spirit or something. Like his feet are like right up against and his knees are right up against the seat in front of him. Wouldn't expect much more, though, from the commanders. Taylor Heineke up against a putrid Texan secondary is start worthy. I'm not banging the drum for a huge game here, but I do think he has that in him. Davis Mills continues to just be below average, never really doing anything crazy. He's not necessarily costing the Texans games, but he's never going to win them a game. Like, he's not going to be the reason why they win. Davis Mills is a sit. Next up, we got the Philadelphia Eagles at the Indianapolis Colts. Matt Ryan named the starter what felt like 12 seconds before the Colts game started up against the Raiders last week. And Matt Ryan looked like the Matt Ryan from the past. He looked really good. Seems like Jeff Saturday has figured some shit out that Jeff Saturday knows what he's talking about, despite the fact that all of the media absolutely bulldozed over the idea of him being the head coach of the Indianapolis Colts. With that said, this week they face one of the best teams, if not the best team in the NFL in the Philadelphia Eagles. I know they just lost to the Commanders, but hey, it's a division game. You know, you can just excuse that. Division games are always close. Now they get the Colts. I expect a stomping of the Philadelphia Eagles or of the Indianapolis Colts by the Philadelphia Eagles. Matt Ryan is interesting. I think he's a better quarterback than Sam Ellinger, but everyone knows that. Against the Eagles, though, tough start for me. Jalen Hurts is obviously a must-start quarterback every single week, even if the Colts played way better both offensively and defensively last week up against the Raiders. But then again, the Raiders are uh, kind of kind of dog shit pretty bad next up we got the new york jumbo jets at the new england patriots and we're gonna be keeping this one short like kyler murray's height zach wilson and mystic mac jones are both sits zach wilson has been incredibly inconsistent this season we see some drives out of him where it's like okay that's why the jets drafted him but a majority of the time we see Wow, why did the Jets draft this guy this high overall? Now, I'm not someone who's just out completely on Zach Wilson. I don't think Zach Wilson's very good, but, you know, I'm not going to be out of him this early, right? It's very early in his career. I'm not going to say he's guaranteed to be a bust. I don't think he's very good, but it is what it is. I don't think Mac Jones is very good either. This is a battle of two fucking fantastic top tier upper echelon defenses as well as two great run games even without Brees Hall I really feel as though this is going to be an incredibly close game that ends up being low scoring I'd really be shocked if Zach Wilson or Mac Jones laid the hammer down in this spot so I'm going to be sitting both Zach Wilson 
and Mac Jones in this matchup, Jets at Patriots. Next up, we move to the Los Angeles Rams at the New Orleans Saints. But before we break down this game at the quarterback position, I would like to give you guys a quick word from our friends and our sponsor over at DraftKings Sportsbook. Now, they have an exclusive offer for you. If you're a brand new user to DraftKings Sportsbook, you click on the link in the video description down below or in the pinned comment, you will receive this beautiful offer. Bet $5 on any pre-game money line any sport pregame money line, and you'll receive $200 in free bets if your bet wins. Now, since your bet has to win, I think you shouldn't go with the NFL. We just saw the Eagles be big favorites, huge favorites against the Commanders, and then lose. So I think we should go on over to college football. I'm going to show you guys how to do that right now on DraftKings Sportsbook. It should be on your screen right now. We navigate over to the college football tab. We're going to scroll down a little bit, and then we'll go to one of my two favorite games of the week. I'm going to be talking about both of them. So we got Ohio State minus 6,000 at Maryland. Bet $5 on that. You receive $200 in free bets if your bet wins. If Ohio State wins, or you don't like Ohio State, that's fine. You can go with Florida State versus Louisiana Lafayette, minus 2,400. Bet $5 on the money line. Receive $200 in free bets if that bet wins. And those free bets can be used on any sport. It could be the NBA. You're watching an NFL video, fantasy football. So I assume maybe the NFL, NHL, whatever you want, college football even. So make sure you guys check that out. Link in the video description down below. It really helps me out a ton if you check it out. And it helps you out too because... Getting free money basically from sports books is hard to come upon. So back on into things, we got the Rams at the Saints. I personally have gone on multiple rants already this week about this situation, so I'm not here to just kind of beat a dead horse, right? But why the fuck are the Saints not starting Jameis Winston? Now, they haven't announced the starter yet, so maybe it's Jameis, but I... Don't want to watch Andy Dalton play anymore. Andy Dalton is so fucking boring. Andy Dalton is just like, again, I'm not trying to insult the guy because he's a good backup, right? He comes in one game for James. It's like, ooh, there's Andy Dalton. But when you see Andy Dalton for however many games in a row it's been at this point, I don't want to see that anymore. Andy Dalton is not good. So he's a sit Matthew Stafford, the Saints defense, kind of looking good. Starting to look good. Matthew Stafford coming off the concussion. I think he plays this week, missed last week up against the Cardinals. Without Cooper Cup, good luck, buddy. Next up, we move to the Detroit Lions at the New York Football Giants. I like both quarterbacks in this spot. Danny Dimes coming off a pretty solid performance up against the Houston Texans. I honestly was shocked that he didn't rush the ball a little bit more up against the Texans, but he was a top 12 quarterback in that matchup. I think he could easily be a top 12 quarterback yet again this week up against a putrid Detroit Lions defense. Jared Goff started off the season. He was looking really good. Recently, he's been kind of just, meh. I play him in good matchups, sit him in bad matchups. The Giants defense is skill players wise, not very good. Same thing with their offense, but they just play good because of the coaching. Brian DeBull is a legitimate genius. Jared Goff is a start, but again, not one of those upper echelon guys. Next up, we move to with the turn your volume down, the loss. Vegas Raiders at the Denver Broncos. Now, I know what you might be thinking, Nick, there's no way I'm starting Mr. Unlimited, dangerous Russell Wilson. But let me tell you something. If you go ahead and look at the game log for Russell Wilson, you will see one game where he played good. What game was that? That was up against the absolutely dog shit, bottom of the barrel, Las Vegas Raiders. Russell Wilson I know his wide receiver core is decimated. His wide receiver core is more decimated than your asshole after you eat $50 worth of Taco Bell. But at the end of the day, Dan, or not Daniel Jones, Russell Wilson, crazy that I slipped up with Daniel Jones and Russell Wilson. That just shows how bad Russell Wilson has been. This matchup is good for him, even with the injured weapons. Now, I'm not here to tell you you got to fucking throw Russell Wilson in your lineup. He's a must start. But I'm interested in him up against the Raiders. Derek Carr, the Colts. Derek Carr started crying in the press conference after that game. It was very hard to watch. 
incredibly hard to watch. I almost feel bad for Derek Carr. Like, it's not all his fault. Josh McDaniels is an absolute fucking buffoon. Fire that guy off into the sun and just lock both the coaches into a cannon. Hackett and McDaniels. Fire them into the sun. They both stink. Um, Derek Carr's start worthy. The Broncos' defense is incredible, so I don't think he smashes in this spot, but again, kind of one of those bottom-of-the-barrel guys. Next up, we got the Dallas Cowboys at the Minnesota Vikings, and how about them boys, baby? The Dallas Cowboys choking to the Green Bay Packers. Very funny. Dallas, you love to see it. It's it's so funny seeing the Cowboys choke. I don't know what it is. It might just be, like, I have friends that are Dallas Cowboys fans, so it's always funny to see when one of my friend's teams lose. Though, if the Cowboys made it to the Super Bowl and they were not up against the Dolphins, I would cheer for them because I'd want my friends to be happy. But it's very funny in the regular season when the Cowboys just, it seems like, oh my gosh, they get the Packers? Packers are awful. The Packers can't beat the fucking Lions. And then the Packers just absolutely suck the life out of the Dallas Cowboys. Very enjoyable to watch. Dak Prescott, though, up against the Vikings. I think this is going to be a real high-scoring game. Kirk Cousins, Kirk Thuggins, Perk Cousins going up against the Bills last week. A1 steak sauce level performance. Chef's kiss, man, you freak. I like him up against a stout Cowboys defense. I also like Dak Prescott. Dak played decent in that game, uh, even though the Packers won. Dak still had a really good game. Next up, we move to the Cincinnati Bengals at the Pittsburgh Steelers. Kenny Pickett is still a guy that's riding the pine for me in fantasy football. I do actually think, though, that Kenny Pickett does have a lot of things on tape. When you watch the game, you're like, oh, wow. That's why they drafted Kenny Pickett. Now, it's not like every game... You see a a bunch of plays, you're like, holy shit, Kenny Pickett, this guy's going to be elite, blah, blah, blah. But the Steelers, like as a whole, like the old lines kind of dick cheese, right? The offensive lines kind of like a turn style. So again, I'm not here trying to really get on my knees and give Kenny Pickett the gawk, gawk, dick suck 9,000. But I do think Kenny Pickett is pretty solid based upon what I've seen. Not again, not a start worthy fantasy quarterback, but he has been solid. This is an AFC North rivalry matchup, which typically is much closer than you would think. The Steelers won the first time out in week number one. Joe Shiesty looked pretty bad in that game at the beginning. And then in the second half, he just unleashed everything. He went super sane mode and he went off. Uh, The Steelers defense is way better with TJ Watt back, which could be seen in last week's game. I, I do think like on paper going in, I feel confident in Joe Burrow, but something tells me that I shouldn't be surprised if Joe Burrow shits the bed in this spot. Next up, we got the Kansas City Chiefs at the LA Chargers. I've made fun of this matchup all week, so I will uh, tone it down a little bit here. Don't want to watch the Chargers again on primetime, but Keenan Allen and Mike Williams are projected to be back. I'll believe it when I see it, but if they are, that makes Herbert put in a really good spot. Last time these two teams played was the game in which Justin Herbert, the pervert, got hurt. He hurt his ribs, and honestly, he has not looked the same since then. I do think Justin Herbert's schedule really does open up going deeper on into the season, where he could really end up being a league-winning quarterback that you could trade for right now. I don't love this matchup, but again, I do think his wide receivers getting healthy. Like, if Mike Williams, Keenan Allen are back, like they do really have a solid wide receiver core with Austin Eckler and Gerald Everett as well. So this is a good spot for Herbert. We'll have to see on Sunday night because this is Sunday night football if they actually are healthy or not. But then again, you're going to have to set your lineup Sunday morning. So hopefully we have a lot more news towards the other weapons on this team before then. Uh, Right now, I do think Herbert is start worthy and does have top five upside. Patrick Mahomes, you're starting him regardless. Right now, I believe on DraftKings Sportsbook, he's either plus 125 or plus 150. He's the odds on favorite to win MVP. I hope my guy Tua wins it personally because I got him at plus 1,000 last week. Now he's at plus, I believe, 450. So I'm, I'm I'm a sharp getting him early, but... I uh, really, I, I think this is going to be a great matchup for Mahomes. Even if Juju does not play, they still have a lot of weapons. MVS, Kadarius, Tony, and then maybe McCole Hardman gets healthy. They have Kelsey as well. Good spot for him, but you already knew you were starting Patrick Mahomes. And final game here, we got Monday night. 
side, football, the San Francisco 49ers at the Arizona Cardinals. Jimmy Garoppolo is basically the definition of mid. When you look up mid quarterback, a picture of Jimmy Garoppolo shows up. The guy's fucking good looking as hell. Uh, but at the end of the day, pause. He's just an okay quarterback. The Cardinals defense is not very good. I know they look good against John Walford last week, but John Walford's absolute dick cheese. So I think Jimmy Garoppolo has a pretty solid showing here. Not a guy I'm banging the drum for aggressively, but probably going to finish anywhere inside the top uh, 15, 14 at the quarterback position. Kyler Murray should be returning from injury. Took off last week to go grind out some Call of Duty. Warzone does drop on Thursday, so that could end up impacting Kyler Murray's play. But at the end of the day, the 49ers defense is tough, but I still think Kyler Murray has played, you know, he's not Kyler, the guy I thought he was going to be going into the season. He's not a guy that I'm really ever counting on to be a top three quarterback, but he's a top eight, top six quarterback pretty reliably, even up against a stout Niners defense. I'm going to roll him out there. Thank you guys all so much for watching. If you did end up enjoying, make sure you hit that like button down below as well as hitting that subscribe button. It would help me out a ton. If you want to follow me on Twitter, please do so at NotoriousFNTSY. Make sure you guys do take advantage of that offer bet $5 on any sport pregame money line, $5 and you receive $200 in free bets if your bet wins over on DraftKings Sportsbook. Again, you have to be a new user. Click on the link in the video description or in the pinned comment. I love you guys all so much. If you have any questions about week number 11, please ask down below in the comment section. I love you guys all. Hope you have a great rest of your guys' day. And as always, good boy!